when you're serving. Because people, there's so much going on nowadays. So we're just going to sing a little bit of this and actually pray for us. Because he's my everything when I have nobody else. I have the Lord. Amen.
for everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's my everything. Amen. I did see one of my good friends. Amen. And I'm asking him to, if it's all right with superintendent, one of my good friends, Pastor Alexander, made his way in. And I'm so very thankful and very grateful. I'm asking him if that's all right with superintendent, if he can make his way to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. The pastor of the Bethesda, the House of Mercy Church of God in Christ. Amen. I appreciate him making his way down here. Amen. 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 It's something about when friends come to support you. It's something about when friends come to support you. Because I know when I ain't got no one else. As long as I got my friends and God, that's all I need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are moving swiftly and quickly towards the word of God. Amen. 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 Tap that name and say, God is my everything. Hallelujah. Amen. It is now time for the word of God. Amen. It is my distinguished pleasure to present to some and introduce to others one of my good friends. I first, I first met Elder Jones. I met, met him at the Friendship Baptist Church of Christ Jesus, right. where the pastor is none other than Paul Burleson, and the first lady is none other than Dallas Burleson. Amen? Can we, give, can we put our hands together for the Burlesons? Amen? Longtime friends of New Vision Christian Center, progressive, amen? Amen. They're known around the city, around the state, and around the nation. But I first met him, and it was pretty funny. I don't know if he remembers. <laughs> when I first met him, he said, the first thing he said to me was, Doc, you're clean. And I was like, am I really? Well, I tried my best, and I was like, well, Doc, you clean too. And we just... We sat there and we, you know, we uh, uh, exchanged, you know, compliments and stuff like that. And over the years, he's just been a great friend to me. He's been there. He's been there to give me wisdom, to give me encouragement. And he always manages to just lift my spirits and just give me words of encouragement. Amen. Nothing like getting words of encouragement. Amen. So it is my distinguished pleasure as we're resting on our feet for me to present and introduce none other than Elder J.L. Jones. Can we say amen and put our hands together for him as he makes his way to the front? You would grab the hand of someone next to you. We believe that the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I can but touch the hand, we hope you may be whole. I just believe the hand you're touching knows how to be in touch with Jesus. For whatever you need tonight, the healing is in the house. Squeeze that hand. Speak favor to the hand you hold right now. Favor. A merited favor. Squeeze the hand again. Speak power to the hand you hold. Squeeze the hand one more time. Now speak victory to the hand you hold. Victory on the job, victory at the house, victory wherever you go. And we don't we no longer fight for victory, we fight from victory. Father, we come to tell you thank you now. We come to lift up your holy and righteous name. And Father, we know without you, preaching is impossible. Sing is difficult. But God, we thank you for another chance, another day, just to tell you thank you. Forgive us and wake up, Father, never saying a word to you. And Father, we want to make sure if we don't see tomorrow, we're going to tell you thank you now. We're going to give you praise now. And Father, we give you praise and glory. Now, Father, bless your word over tonight. And we may hear from what thus saith the Lord. We give you praise and we clap our hands in the sanctuary. We say amen. 
hug somebody next to you and say, it's good to see you. It's good to be seen. Certainly, we honor to God for being here. It was snowing yesterday, but we're still here. Shanti was going back and forth. He said, I said, keep an eye on my men. He said, if God clears the path, I'll want more way. So God saw fit, even after a blessing, that we were able to be here today. We are grateful. We are grateful for that. We honor our superintendent on tonight. You didn't hear me. Let me try it again. We honor our superintendent on tonight. I've always called him the preacher's preacher. Amen. We honor him. He has always been someone I just wanted to sit at the feet at. Amen. And just learn from the heart. Thank you, Superintendent, for your words of encouragement, even at the worst times of my life. And we honor you, so we honor Pastor Hill, my big brother. Amen. We thank God for you. Thank God for my friend, Amen. Pastor Alexander. I was just thinking not too long ago, some years ago, and uh, Superintendent, I didn't have any really good suits. I didn't have maybe about four or five. Pastor Alexander called me and said, Doc, I'm on the way. I said, okay. All right. Next thing I know, he opened his trunk. Had to be about 20 different suits. Oh, my he said, Reverend, take them all. Right. <laughs> and I've been telling him ever since. I said, any jacket you tied up, call me first. <laughs> We're just grateful for his friendship over the years. He is a friend of mine. All right, man. And to my brother, Minister Ashanti, I have to be honest, when I got the call to come, tears, superintendent, just start falling from my face. Because sometimes when you go through storms, people are good to forget what your name even is. Because there are some folks who hope you die in the storm you're in. But you're looking at a survivor. And you, know, you feel like you couldn't, I didn't have what it take to preach. I thought I was just going to be done and just hang it up. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get a text and say, we want you to come. Yeah. All I can do is just tell God, thank you. Amen. Because he didn't have to ask me to come anywhere. Amen. But you got to remember, just because you go through something doesn't mean it changes the direction of who you're called to. All right. yeah. That's right. That's so right. with that, we are grateful. And I'm honored to come and to share. And I'm, I'm a lot better from the last time I was here. So God has Thank done you. some things. Thank you. Amen. And sometimes it's just good to be by yourself. Amen. 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 So we are grateful. We will not belittle. Thank God for my little brother. Amen. Thanks to Terry Turner. Amen. Yes, sir. I thank God for him. He is just my favorite boy since I met him at a musical. Yeah. And uh oh no. I was playing on the organ. He said, who is this man on the organ? He said, Doc, you playing? I said, no, I learned from you. We've been boys ever since. Everyone, even was a time when the enemy tried to get in between me and him. But we saw each other in the church, and I just, the tears just followed again. I said, if I said anything, you forgive me. Because the last thing I need to lose is a family member. It's one thing to have friends, but it's another thing to have family that will fight for you. Amen. 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 So we thank God for him. Thank God for my, he's my big little brother. Amen. He's bigger than me. And I think I can move my thing. Amen. Amen. Elder Walter Salonis, we thank God for him. Amen. Amen. And Miss Evangelist Jones that came with us on tonight. Shanti told me I was ready to hear Dr. Martin on tonight. And uh, he said he wasn't coming. And he said, it's just you. But all right, give me a few minutes. <laughs> and so we thank God for what he is doing on tonight. If you have your Bibles, we won't delay the hour. We'll get to the word. 
so we can get back on the road. Make sure it don't snow. <laughs> Amen. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers, the 23rd chapter. I want to just throw the thing off on our theme. Us together, we stay strong. As you know, you can't be strong by yourself all the time. It's always good to have brothers that you can stand with. I got all my friends here, so I ain't scared of nobody. I came ready. <laughs> Number the 23rd chapter, we want to start at verse 7. And we'll skip around just a little bit, just a few passages of scripture, if you're able to stand for the reading of the word of God on tonight, those who are able. We certainly honor God for First Lady Hill. Amen. Big sister, amen. May God be you preaching this soon. <laughs> Numbers 23, verse 7 reads as follows. He took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and defy Israel. Verse 8 says, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Skip down to verse 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob? The number of the fourth part of Israel. Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last be like his. Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies. It's amazing how your enemies will try to get you to curse his enemy. Because your enemy is your enemy. Took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. Skip down to verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he, hath he said, shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received the man meant to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot, watch this, reverse it. You may be seated. Let me again just read Numbers 23, 19, 20, and 23 from the contemporary English version. That says, God is no mere human. He doesn't tell lies or change his mind. God always keeps his promises. Focus on verse 20. My command from God was to bless the people. And there's nothing I can do to change what he has done. 23 says, no magic charms can work against them. Just look at what the Lord has done for his people. Can you say amen? amen? Putting the focus on verse 20, let me read again. My command from God was to bless these people. And there's nothing I can do to change what he has done. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth. The word of our God shall remain forever. Yes, Would like to use for a topic on tonight, preach from the subject, beware of people who try to edit your prophecy. Beware of people who try to edit your prophecy. On April 14th, 1982, the legendary dance machine and the entertainer extraordinaire known to the world as Michael Jackson began to embark on working on his sixth studio album 
that would prove to be the record that made him the legend he is today. The blueprint of this album was to show the world that even black people can become a household name. Many people were behind the project, seeing that the album was real, it has real and true potential that could set and break records and at the same time make him the megastar he was destined to be. It was during the time of the production that his brother, Jermaine Jackson, was having superintended a serious problem with the idea of this album. Listen, you have to learn and understand. You have to watch people who can't stand not what you have, but the idea that's in your mind. Yeah. Be careful of telling everybody your dreams. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't gonna say nothing right there. Yeah. You have to be aware of people who want you to abort the dream that they didn't have. Uh, I'm feeling it already. Let me slow down. <laughs> he was having a problem with the idea of this album. It was now superintendent that he was having meetings with the Jackson family, expressing to them that this thriller album, watch this, was trash and a complete waste of time, and that the album would go nowhere. He expressed that they need to go, what they need to do is go come back together as a family and get back to making music that they were known for because all the money Michael is spending on his album could go toward future Jackson projects. But the act superintendent, it is interesting how people can say, how much people can say when it comes to projects that don't involve them. Let me say that again. There's this amazing uh, first lady heal how people all of a sudden get revelation from God when it comes to projects that don't include them. It, it, it's amazing to be superintendent how people leave the church if their name ain't even on the program. But if you're so worried about your name on the program, you first need to make sure your name's in the book. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. So we need to learn and understand, why don't you learn this to be happy for somebody else's dream and learn it because you can't be stingy thanking God, thinking every season is yours. So here it is, he said that, that, that this project it, it, it is going nowhere. But yet how, how interesting it is how people seem to get a word from God. And all of a sudden they have an expert opinion about the objectives that you want to achieve in your life. Now you will find people who are so desperate to play coach to the dreams that do not include them. Right. Much like it is for a pregnant woman taking advice on having a baby from a woman who's known for aborting hers. That's why you don't you don't let you don't allow married people to get advice from divorced folk. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Because what I've learned here with that Pastor Alexander is once I got divorced, I said, let me cut myself off and get myself straight. Because the last thing I want to do is infect a marriage that ain't even mine. Here we have to learn and understand that you have to be careful when it comes to somebody else's anything. Y'all ain't talking to me. You have to learn if it's not your church, then quit trying to make yourself the pastor because you got too many folks trying to start a church in a church. Y'all ain't talking because on this side, if you ain't on this side, then you ain't part of the church, but you ain't on that side, but you ain't. But Jesus said, they say they love me with their lips, but their heart is far. Because no baby, watch this, deserves to be raised by kids who refuse to grow up themselves. You can't be no kid and lead the y'all ain't You can't be no kid and lead the praise and the worship. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You late you lay off, you don't even go to Bible study, but got the nerve to want to be the minister of music. How in the world do you sit there and act like you got an anointing and you gonna preach one revival and be ready for the state meeting? The problem, the problem superintendent that Jermaine was having was he was wanting to relieve childhood success in an adult stage. Let me say that again. He was trying to live to carry childhood success in an adult stage. But the Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I fought 
as a child. I talked like a child. I even walked. I even had on some pampers every now and then. But when I became a man, in other words, you have to learn how to outgrow where you started. Because you can't be 38. If I step on your toes, just look forward. Just look forward. Just... But the understanding is it's impossible, brothers. Can I talk to the brothers here? It's impossible to attract a grown woman with a man who has kindergarten gold. That's a Facebook post right there. I said, it's impossible. How in the world you going to treat her out to eat and you can't even fix nothing for you? Y'all ain't talking to me. You can't take her to the mall. Going to the mall is not a date. Y'all ain't talking to me. Walking on 16th Street Mall is not a date. But if you're too broke to take her anywhere, you need to learn how to date yourself before you can date anybody else. Realize, I mean, and now I might as well go ahead and get it in. <laughs> Realize the words of Apostle Paul when he said, By now, you ought to be teachers, but you have to be taught again because you're still on milk. And not your heart and civil life. You still on powdered, y'all ain't talking to me. Right? And how in the world do you have a leadership uh, that's still drinking, y'all ain't saying that? Uh, how in the world? Uh, because you can't cut up milk, uh, y'all ain't saying You can't put up, uh, you can't spoon, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, you have to learn. Uh, everybody can't be no leader, uh, especially if they're still on Lucky Charms. Uh, and you need to learn how to chew something serious. Problem is, it's one thing to be playing with your toys when you were six. But it's a problem when you're still playing with He-Man and you're 38. Apostle Paul was saying, by now, you should be a man of responsibility and accountability. By now, you should have a full-time job thinking you can be a full-time musician on a $200 budget. Y'all ain't talking about you should know that your Excel bill is more important than your PlayStation. No, they say nothing. Because if a man can't take care of his house, then how in the world do you expect, expect to take care of the house of God and you still wearing huggies yourself? The key is you can't be anointed and stupid at the same time. Maybe, Superintendent, some of us preachers need to get back our license. Because we're guilty of being an angel in the church and a devil in the dark. And the understanding is you can't fight a devil that you live with. Y'all ain't praying with me. You can't tell nobody how to live holy and you've been the whole the whole time. You can't tell nobody how to live straight and you've been crooked the whole time. You can't tell nobody how to keep yourself and you keep giving yourself away the whole time. Maybe we need to give the cross back to because we've been faking the funk. Because the collar don't prove nothing to nobody. Devils aren't scared of collars. Devils aren't scared of collars. They ain't scared of crosses. They ain't scared of your stasis. But they're scared of a life that's been knowing that I'm a up. Take notice of the fact that everything Jermaine was saying about Michael never bothered Michael. That's right. He just kept pushing to make the album. Yeah. God help me. Because the truth of the matter is, 
the hour was going to come whether you liked it or not. You have to understand your destiny has to come to pass whether you got folks who want to see you make it or not. Because some folks, can I tell you the truth, some folks are hoping they can eulogize your character. Some folks are hoping that they can go to your funeral. But baby, I'm here to tell you, not only he that has begun, a good work shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right. That's right. Yes, sir. Understand? You need a hater. To confirm what God called you to produce. You need a hater to confirm who you are in God. And I tell you, church, superintendent can't confirm you. But you need some hell in your life. You need some folks who try to hold you hostage by your past. No, they say nothing. Because they say you was always this. You was always that. You was always clubbing. You was always drinking. But I got to the song where that said, I went to the meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. And they said something. But let me fix the song. It's not something. It's someone. You need a hater to reach greater dimensions. You need a hater to prove that you can perform can living in can't gravity. You need a hater to let the world know just how gifted you really are. You need a hater to establish that you're not a mistake. But you are a masterpiece. You need a hater to let the folks know that you weren't born on purpose, but you were born with purpose. You need a hater to prove that you don't have to sink to someone else's foolish level. You need a hater to let the world know that the God you serve is a one of a kind. You need a hater to prove to the world that God is a worldwide God. You a hater, just so you can testify that he's Adam's redeemer, Eve's matchmaker, Daniel's writing lesson, Jeremiah's amnocentesis, Jerusalem's daydreams, David's war weapons, Jericho's war record, Peter's water walker, Lazarus' grave robber, Stephen's stopwatch, the devil's insurance policy, the devil's eviction notice, because nature is his workshop, the sky is his resume. The universe is his calling card. Redemption is his agenda. Calvary is his thesis. Salvation is his theology. And heaven is his conclusion. You need Jesus. He's my way over. He's my way around. He's my way in. He's my way out. He's my way through. And I heard Superintendent Demahalla take Nobody to me. The reason why you need a hater is because some of us wouldn't know how to pray if we never had one. You need a hater because they wouldn't have put you in the position to preach. No, they gonna talk to you. All you need is somebody to tell you that you can't do it, and you gonna fall on your knees and say, "I can do it." Matter of fact, I. All things through Christ that strengthen them. You need, think of somebody, don't push them, just holler and say, You need a hater, you need. You need. Because here's the understanding. Because here's the understanding here. Superintendent, the Bible says that your gift will make room. But here's the understanding God wants you to go higher. And you the Bible said he'll use your enemies as your footstool because the only way you can go up is not by your gift but by your hate. Yeah. Y'all yeah. said that ain't making me nervous. <laughs> people, but people have no problem talking about the things they're not involved in. 
The word superintendent are a smokescreen to the real issue that's not expressed. And it's funny, I've been in choirs and praise teams, and folks just will quit because they didn't get to lead the song. Okay, okay, let me, let me, let me talk best of you, Minister of Music. I've had some folk who can sing and thought they had to sing every song. Y'all ain't talking to me. And see, I say, you got an SWV issue. Because the problem with the group was that Coco sang everything. That's why the group broke up. Because why? I ain't born to be no background singer. But sometimes you can pass y'all. You are ball hog. And you can't even let anybody else sing the song. Because you think it won't work unless you sing it. But can I tell you, God had angels in heaven before we had praise teams on earth, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because the angels, you don't fight the angels, fight with each other, saying, who gonna say holy? You don't see the angels saying, why didn't you act quiet rehearsal? Because they're on their post with their hands lifted up, saying, holy, holy, holy. Matter of fact, back in the day, Superintendent, y'all didn't even have praise teams. All y'all had was hand clapping, foot stomping. They said, we all sing it together. So quit putting all your dependency on the praise team because you don't need a praise team to praise the Lord, y'all ain't talking. You need to learn to open your mouth. Preach the word. There is a hidden issue. Hey, uh -huh. We find out most of the time Ooh, you will find hidden jealousy Ooh. as a way of changing your language. Uh -huh. Jermaine's issue with Michael's album was the fear that he would get the success he never had. Uh -huh. The problem here is quit looking for your season to show up. And you too stingy to praise God for somebody else. Okay, let me let me talk to this. Quit acting like you're the coldest musician, and you ain't the only one in the gym. Okay, let me turn around. Quit thinking you're the coldest preacher because somebody had to teach you. I heard you preach up. We're standing. We didn't get here because we can preach. We didn't get here because we wear suits, but we're standing on the shoulders. Side effects. Yes, it does. Yes, it 
jealousy. First lady, heal is a form of hatred built on an insecurity. The only reason they was attacking Pastor Alexander was because of a hidden insecurity. It's amazing to me how now we seem to get like we bold and we bad on Facebook. You sit there and talk about somebody like they a dog. When you hide biscuits and bones, y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to be careful. What if God walked in this church, put a screen on the sword, and said, I'm going to expose everybody. I promise you, folks will be faking heart attacks just to get out the door. Because if they show what I've been doing, They were talking about our free and riot. Oh, they was going for blood. But you have to understand, you can't compare mistakes to mistakes. You can't compare sin to sin because all sin leads to the same place. But if you're bad to put wine on Facebook, put yourself, you know I ain't talking to me, put yourself on Facebook. Since when did you become an expert in everybody else's business? Since when? Since when? Preach the word. We got to get out of here. But here, in security shows, whoever is trying to bring you down is already below you. Yes. So why do I have to fight folks who have no character? Why am I wasting my time on people? When I can be in prayer, I can be in my words, I can be at the state meeting, but I'm stuck for four to five hours on Facebook trying to see what you got to say next. If you're bad, say it to my face. Kevin Hart said, say it. With your chest. If you're bad, no, I ain't saying nothing. If you want to talk to me, go talk to superintendent. Bring it to me. Say it. Because here's the truth everybody in here got a pass. That's right. That's right. Yes, 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 right. Everybody's got a past. And I'm not trying to look at your past because the moment you try to look at my past, before you crucify me, get you an extra hammer and some extra nails and crucify yourself before you get to me. That's right. That's right. Preach the word. Wow. Yes, Jesus. Got the nerve. You don't know the hell that man been through. Come on. But it's funny when you go through. You call everybody in your phone book. Then you on Facebook. Y'all pray for me. That the Lord will get it together. Because the problem we're having with people who write checks that they might can't cash. That's it, sir. You talking good. That's it, sir. I like that. But really, let's look at here. On February 28th, the album that Jermaine said was a waste of time won a record setting eight Grammys in one night. And it would go on to sell, Pastor Alexander, 66 million copies, making it the highest selling record ever. And watch this, it's still. The record has never been broken. God help me here. And the first time he got the first of eight out of the awards, he said, let me thank Jermaine. Y'all ain't praying with me. He said, I love you, Jermaine. And you see the, the, the cameraman put his camera on Jermaine. And Jermaine is trying to pick up the rest of his face. Y'all ain't talking. Because he knew. He was astonished that this one out would make Michael the star that he is because Jermaine forgot to be a Jackson. Yes. 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 Uh, wow. Jealousy 
will allow you to become so fixated yeah. on wishing you were Michael mm -hmm. that you forgot you were part of the brand of Jackson. Uh, yeah. uh, you You're right. That's good. That's what good. makes a real district a solid district is when you know you're a part of the brand. You don't have to be the superintendent to be a violator. Don't you know they've been forced to be trying to get this man out the way and been messing up for years? Because every time you try to take him out, God swings it around and takes you out. Be careful. The next person that puts their mouth on superintendent, he'll become the eulogist to their funeral. Uh, jealousy will make you think you can do the wrong thing right. My God. But one writer said it's impossible to get straight timber from a crooked tree. Good God. Because in the society we live in now, you have the same gender marrying the same gender and got the nerve to want to raise a child in a crooked house. How in the world do you raise a straight baby in a crooked house? Jealousy will cause you to become an infected immoral liar. Found out, Terry, some people only lie to other folks for the goal of just to remain relevant. They say, yeah, I preach here too. I, I played there too. And you can't even play Mary ate a little lamb while they're talking to me. And you gonna sit there and act like you're the star of the jurisdiction. But I found out, Superintendent, the worst person in the jurisdiction is the one that wants to be the star. God help me here. Because I found out, First Lady, if you spell star backwards, you get R A T S. Rest. Lord help me. And the problem with our churches, we've got rats in the pulpit. Rats, y'all ain't saying nothing. Missionary rat, evangelist rat, deacon rat, bishop rat, apostle rat. Can we please have some folk that want to live for God than fight for time? Yeah. Can I tell you, some folks. So good at life. Listen, I want to write the Academy Awards and say you need a category for best life. Because they lie so good. Even the liar believes in his own life. But listen, I found out superintendent, they don't lie just to be lying. But they learned it from somebody else. Pastors be lying. <laughs> Musicians be lying. Yeah. Quiet men will sleep with each other. They lying. Yeah. Missionaries are messy. They lying. Yeah. And the jurisdiction looks like a joke. You're right. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we're blaming the devil when it's an inside job. Yeah. I'm almost out of here. I promise you, we're going to start the car and get out of here. <laughs> But, but, but jealousy will produce diseases that will raise hell and havoc in the church. Because here's the understanding the Bible said you have to be careful of sheep in wolves' clothing. But baby, can I help you understand the mentality of a wolf? Says if I can't bend heaven, I'll raise hell. Y'all ain't talking to me. But because wolves want to be in position. And God help us. We're so quick to that we haven't even seen what they can do just to be serving in the work of the Lord. You don't need no title just to be serving. You know, y'all, you don't need no certificate. Came from blood on tonight. Matter of fact, I came for some heads. That's what I, that's what I came for. Because can I tell you something? Superintendent, we've been fighting the same devil for years. Yeah. Something wrong with that already. How 
in the world and you can fight the same devil because here's what's happened. See, when we preach about David and Goliath, we shout and dance when he falls. But then you get upset and you're shocked and surprised with the same devil that fell get back the problem is, Superintendent, we don't finish the job because you weren't supposed to pin him with the stone, but you needed his sword to take his hand. Let us say, we'll produce diseases. Some of us have known people with asinine attitudes, bacterial backbiting. Whooping cough worship, oh. fungal fictitiousness, <laughs> generic gratefulness, hazardous hatred, Ooh. inflammatory intelligence, oh jaundice jealousy, yeah. meningitis mannerisms, right. leprosy lifestyles, parasitic personalities oh with nasty natures and Down syndrome demeanors. But let me tell you, Pastor Alexander, you gotta watch the people who have Down syndrome to me because they come in your church and they preach down, they pray down, they walk down, they sing down, they prophesy down, they shout down to the point they become low down and downright dirty. But we let them lead the praise and wonder why it looks like you have a praise team yeah, with spiritual HIV. Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's deep. Wow. Come on, sir. The God says to us, some of us are so fake. How in the world do you speak in tongues that can't even speak to Ow. each other? Ow. How you say you got a word and can't even take the instruction of the same word you got. And in front of you got these little last minute two dollar prophets saying I always got a word. Here they are on Facebook. Everybody's a prophet on Facebook Live. And you done fuck in fellowship because you don't even know how to follow your own pastor. And you'll sit there and say you got an international ministry when you're nothing more than a local front. You local. How in the world you got a contract? You local. You got a business manager and you local. Ain't been on Bobby Jones. You ain't even sang on the jurisdiction of choir, but you got a cut. Y'all ain't talking to me. You all of a sudden now you a worship leader because you don't sing one song in the district meeting. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All of a sudden now learn how to sit down somewhere and learn how to serve and say, Superintendent. Because the last thing I want to do is be responsible for taking down his ministry. That's right. Lord. Amen. To that. Amen. Amen. Can I, let me go this way. There are God people say they were happy when you lost that church. Yeah. 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 There they were. Yeah. There they were. Folks was happy, but then got mad when one door closed. And another one opened. Y'all ain't praying with me. And here it is. Folks have been waiting for that church to close. And they thought it's over. But I will love when Super T dusted himself off. Put his tie back on straight. He said, we going to build the gift. Because we don't need to understand. No church can be founded on a building. But the church is on the inside. This is the church of You can't join. No, no, no. You have to be born into this. You don't need no God. Ain't never been after your membership. He's after your relationship. Yes, the word. My goodness. My uh, but it seems more now than ever. Lord have mercy. The church is infatuated with prophets and prophecy. We spend thousands of dollars to travel across the country 
in the hopes they'll prophesy to us. I remember Pastor Alexander when Juanita Bynum came. Yeah. And she told everybody, I want you to buy a white handkerchief. Yes. Yes. And I'm gonna touch every handkerchief. Well, I think Target went broke. I think everybody went to the same store <laughs> buying all the handkerchiefs. The folks don't walk in there, boys, you'll touch mine today. Come to find out she left that night. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. But I'm just saying what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, went broke on handkerchiefs, hoping she would prophesy to you. When God said you can prophesy to yourself. Because quit looking for superintendent to slap some oil in his hands every night. Learn to go to Walmart by yourself and get you some virgin oil. Slap it in your hands and prophesy, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Prophesy to yourself. I am the lender and not the Prophesy to yourself that I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. Prophesy to yourself that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Prophesy to yourself. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, yes. be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. Yes, sir. I had to do that myself, Superintendent. Yes, Just the last time I was here, I went through some major storms and was ready to throw in the towel. Mm. But my daddy told me, he said, son, you don't get quit preaching just because it hurts. Sometimes you have to bleed in the pulpit to get the word across. Y'all ain't talking to me. And if it takes me bleeding in the pulpit for somebody to get the deliverance they need, then send me. I'll go. If it takes my name getting smashed in the mud for somebody to get the deliverance they need, then send me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go. Wow. Here, let me tell you, if you need to prophesy anything, I learned to but didn't have to prophesy but not pray. All right. Uh huh. No, y'all looking at me. What in the world is the not pray? That ain't in our Sunday school book. The not pray. That ain't in no Bible. But the Bible says, speak those things. As if they were. That are not. Yes. It is. That's the not pray. Uh, the prayer says, I remove the have nots, the can nots, and the do nots from my mind. Erase the will nots, the may nots, and the might nots that try to come against the calling on my life. Release me from the could nots, the should nots that try to object me from going forward. But most of all, remove the am not, shall they pray with me? Because I refuse to be held back by other people's opinions that try to build their life in my shadow. Y'all ain't talking to me, but because you got folk that'll say that you won't mount to anything, but it didn't work. They said you won't graduate, but it didn't work. They said you can't be a good father, but it didn't work. They said you'll never get a job. Because you have a record. But the understanding is I may have a record with the law, but I've got a life in Jesus. You are preaching. They say you'll never, you'll always be nothing. But God is a specialist at making everything out of nothing. Y'all ain't talking to me. I heard the preacher say, Superintendent, God stood on the stage of nothing. And he reached through nowhere till he got to somewhere, got a hold of something, bring something back from somewhere, all the way back to nowhere, and make everything out of something. Yes. 
Now I'll tell you, you'll never make anything out of yourself. But God is a specialist out of making anything out of something. But one day, Shanti, he took a black cow, made it eat green grass, made it turn white milk, and made Kraft Cheese a billionaire company. Don't sit there. If he can do that with a cow, then the possibilities are endless when it comes to you. Understand? The title of this message does not say you need to be afraid of enemies that try to edit your prophecy, but rather beware. Meaning, you have to pray with your eyes open. Because some people only want the opposite of what God said about you. Balak found it impossible to reverse God's blessing with a witch's curse. God help me right there. How funny it is when your enemy gets desperate to, to use one of God's own to speak a curse over the same people he's got his hand on. It's amazing to me that you got people who think they're powerful because they think they've got witches brew. Y'all ain't talking to me, but they think they operate in voodoo, she do, he do, they do, we do. But you have to understand, you can bring the broom, you can bring the pot, y'all ain't talking to me, you can wear the hat, but it's no powerful than the guy I serve. You have to learn how to get bold and tell the devil, I wish a witch would. Y'all ain't talking to me. But I wish a witch would try to curse my marriage. I wish a witch would try to destroy my church. I wish a witch would come for my district missionary. But I wish a witch would come for my superintendent. I wish a witch would come for my family. I wish, y'all ain't saying nothing. I wish a witch would come for my kids. Because here's the understanding. If you don't come for mine, you better pack a lunch. It's going to be an all-day fight. Somebody holler, I wish a wish. Push somebody. Tell them, I wish a witch would. Come for my anointing. I wish a witch would. Let me get out of here. Evander uh, Jones, start the car. We got to go home now. Uh, it reminds me, God says, to pretend that some of our greatest blessings have come from witches. Oh, y'all didn't say, let me get this. <laughs> some of your greatest blessings came from a witch. <laughs> some of your greatest messages came from a witch. Let me explain and take my seat. I'm only going to say it one time. I promise. I'm reminded to pretend of a woman that had been looking for a house. And she had been praying, God, help me find a house. I need somewhere to put my kids in a safe home. And the realtor finds a house. And she says, I'll take it. And God's favor was so on the woman that she didn't have to put any money down. And she was packing up her apartment, getting ready to move in to the house. But when she started bringing boxes, first lady, to the house, some of the neighbors said, don't move in that house because the witch doctor down the street put a curse on the house. And everybody that's moved in the house died in the house. But the woman looked at the people, shook her head and laughed and said, what God has for me? Y'all ain't talking to me, but it is for me. Even if it's wrapped up in a witch's box. And here now it is that she moves the family in the house. And all of a sudden, 
the folks are saying, please, don't go in the house. We don't want you to lose your life and those precious babies. But she moves in anyway, gets the house all fixed up. And while they go to bed, they wake up the next morning and people are screaming on the outside. And she wakes up and looks through the window and the folks are hollering, get out the house. And here now, superintendent, she goes to the front door, and the witch doctor is across the street, and he's pointing at the door. She looks on the door and sees a chicken with his head cut off, and the blood is still squirting on the door. They said, get out now. They're going to kill you right now. But the woman gets an idea, superintendent. She says, she tells her son, go grab me the hammer. He brings back the hammer. She takes the nail out the chicken. She looked at the people and said, mind your business. She goes into the kitchen first lady, throws the chicken in the sink, turns on the cold water, plucks the feathers off the chicken. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Gets a knife, gets out the chicken. All of a sudden, Pastor Alexander, she found some shaken bacon, put some salt and pepper, found some Uncle Beans, put it in the pot, found some potatoes, put it in the pot, and then when the food was ready, she said, Lord, I thank you, not only did you give me a house, but the food on the table, you made the devil break it, y'all ain't talking about your next miracle, the devil's got to break
for the move, kind spirit. We thank you for the move. Bless your name, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. appreciate you for coming and supporting him. Amen. And me and him are the same way. Whenever he has something going on, I try to get there and support him the best I can. And he's the same way right along with me. So I do appreciate him and his friendship. Amen. We do want to appreciate Pastor and First Lady Hill of the Trinity Temple Church of God and Christ for coming out here tonight. Our district evangelist, amen, for the Midwestern District, amen. I did not know that, amen. Our district evangelist, can we give him a hand praise, amen. Amen, amen. I certainly do want to thank none other than our evangelist of the evening, Elder J.L. Jones, amen. Can we give our evangelist a hand? Come on, we can do better than that. Can we give our evangelist a hand, amen. Let God use him to deliver a word to the people of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I certainly want to thank, I call them the Sterling sisters, amen, but I certainly want to thank them for coming out here and supporting their little brother, their little cousin. I greatly appreciate it. They're always there when I need them. Amen? Amen. amen. I do want to thank all of New Vision that's here. Amen. Believe me, believe me, there is more of New Vision, but... If they're just not here on tonight, amen. But those, the ones that are here were meant to be here, amen. 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 You don't want to miss out on a word just because, oh, it's cold outside, amen. You were meant to be here for a reason, amen. amen. I certainly do want to thank my uh, 
helper. He kind of helps me with this and he kind of gives me, you know, make sure that what I'm doing stays on track. None other than Deacon Joshua Sales. I appreciate you, Doc, for hanging in there with me. Amen. I want to thank my uh, kitchen helpers, the one that prepared the food Amen. on tonight. Amen. None other than Minister Shamika Ford, Deacon S. Yvonne Harris. And then, of course, Sister Brenda always kind of helps me out and gives me what I need if I'm lacking something. Amen. So can we give our kitchen help a hand? There are refreshments. Amen. There are refreshments. We don't want you going home and not having anything in your belly. Amen. You got a spiritual word. But now you, you need some, some, physical, some physical nourishment after that. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know when I hear that there are refreshments after a church service, that almost sends me shouting again. Yes, I tell you what. So I do also want to appreciate our minister of music stepping in. Amen. Can we give our minister of music a hand for stepping in? She's always there when I need her for the music wise. Can we give it up for our band here tonight that we have? Come on, can we give it up for our band? If we didn't have music, we would just be in here without music. Amen. Our drummer, Brother Eddie Hightower, on the keys, Brother Kyrie Johnson, and on the organ, none other than Minister Terry Turner. Amen. 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 And last but not least, I do want to thank my family. My family is not here, but one of my family members is here. Well, I should say three, amen. But I do want to thank God for my grandmother always being there, always going with me when I say I'm going to a church service, amen. Missionary Tina Smith, can we give her a hand? Amen. And to my mother who is currently at the hospital with my stepfather, I appreciate her and and my stepfather and my aunts and uncles, they were able to give financially. And I tell you this, Pastor, even though you don't see them, they are always supporting New Vision. They are always supporting Progressive when it comes to financial, getting anything for the church. So I do want to appreciate my family. I don't think I missed anybody. Amen. Pastor. And my pastor. Amen. Can we give it up for my superintendent, my leader, William R. Ephraim? Amen. I want to appreciate my pastor because on last night he told me, he said, it's up to you if you have the service or not. He said, but if you do, I'll be here. And he's been there ever since. Amen. For 19 years, my life, he's been there. And I do want to thank and appreciate my superintendent, my pastor, my grandfather for being there for me. Amen. Amen. I think that's all I have to say. There are refreshments in the back. Amen. And it's now my distinguished pleasure to bring up my leader to give us the benediction. None other than superintendent of the Midwestern District. And most importantly, the pastor of New Vision Christian Center Church of God in Christ. None other than superintendent William R. Ephraim. Can we give him a hand? Wow. What a word. My God. And I... All, you all are so magnificent. I'm certainly appreciative of all of that. I want you to, I'm going to take care of that. Just get it for him. Amen. Praise God. God is good. I'm so happy all of you are here. You know, it is amazing, and I'm going to let y'all go because I'm looking at the time. He used to be my runner. He'd go with me. You know, out, you know, revivals out of town and little bitty guys sitting there. And when I used to, he'd, he'd run around the church. Look what the Lord is doing with him now. Don't fool yourself. These little people, their computers are working. Amen. Pastor Hill, God is good. If you don't mind, would you do us the honor of giving the benediction? Say amen for Pastor Hill as he comes. something was said tonight. It's a blessing to you. A reminder that we are stronger together. I ask him for your prayers. We travel back, those from Denver, Super Terminator, for your prayers. I have to preach tomorrow afternoon from 
Black History Month program. God has dropped a word that I will come back like you don't see me. So we will be going there and see what the Lord has to say there. And it has been an honor. And my brother, Shanti, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Allow me to come back this way. And thank God all of you will come. Harry, boy. Certainly an honor. Superintendent has been an honor for us to serve to stand where you stand. And I'm grateful for the privilege. Listen, pray. Father, we thank you for this time, Father, of coming together. We thank God that we, you have reminded us all tonight that we are stronger together. Not just as men, not just as women, but as family. But Father, we know that the family is worth fighting for. Now, God, help us to take what we've heard tonight it to ourselves. God, we thank you that we'll never leave the same way we came. Now, God, be with us as we travel our separate destination, but never leaving away from the Holy Ghost presence. Dear God, be with us as we travel on the highways. Give us safe passage. Let your angels of protection be with all the cars. Wherever they are going, Father, we speak a miracle at the hospital right now. But Father, we know that late you are a midnight miracle worker. And Father, we thank you that the miracle is already done. We thank you that God, he shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. The same God that is in this house is the same God that's in the hospital. And Father, we thank you for being omnipresent. So Father, be with us again as we travel our separate destinations and we're never leaving away from your Holy Ghost presence. Till we meet again in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. High five about ten folks and say it's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you.